Hello everyone, this is your host on the left, Owl, with another solo video uh, concerning Diablo. So if you're interested in that, please stick around, because today we're going to be covering the opening cinematic. Uh, last time we covered the manual, so now we are taking our first steps into the world of Diablo. Uh, I am going to react to some of the things that I see in the, uh, in the cinematic itself. So the first thing we see there is the sword uh, that is in the ground. Then we see these houses who are ruined, seems burned out, very foggy and dusty. And then you see someone has been tied to the ground and their, uh, their organs being devoured by these crows. And keep zooming in towards the sword, which uh, I might even pause here to say uh, the setting sun there behind the sword is significant. Then we see our the warrior at least come back um, and he's finding dead people everywhere. People have been hung. Don't forget for treason. And we keep zooming in towards this sword which has its own significance and uh, a deep Something deep is going on there. Finally, we get to see the crypts and the shadows where these demons lurk. And from the sword, a brilliant light comes out and all hell breaks loose, let's say. Kind of shows a... Actually, it might not be the warrior. It might just be a warrior who dies in there. And then you get to see Diablo, finally. So, we'll see how I lay that over. Uh, Alright, so I want to address these things one at a time. First, the sword. The sword in the ground there. that It has the setting sun behind it. And it's already started with a pretty ominous, like the trees around there have already been decimated. And it's kind of uh, it, it's an intonation to the lore point, let's say, of the defeat of Condoros. This is the fall of the order of the land, right? This is the darkening of Tristram that we're about to see in the opening cinematic, basically. And so, it it the the visual imagery goes to show uh, that this really this sword in the ground is is a defeated sword, right? not one that's being used and the setting sun behind it kind of seals that imagery by indicating that the sword uh, has a tie with the the waning of the light we'll come back to the sword though obviously my first thoughts on it uh, then when we see the ruined town and the poor sap who is tied to the ground so one of those things, the first thing shows the right that the a lot of the homes and uh, buildings have been abandoned, and then we we can kind of see why because you see that guy there is tied down and crows are eating uh, his organs. He's already long dead. Uh, the crow gets an eye actually, I believe it's an eye, and uh, it flops around a little bit, creating that horror motif as well. Not just not. Uh, only to say these uh, are referencing lore points, but this shows the the horrors that have befallen this land. And we know uh, from reading the manual already, uh, likely what happened is that this person was ordered to be killed by the king. After all, he seems long dead, and demons don't typically leave their victims like this, so... It is a man-made horror that we see, and the crows eating it, right, has brought carrion to the land. And we see the sword again, this time a little closer. We'll get to that in a minute. Then we see our, well, it's, I don't even want to say our hero anymore. It's hard to say who this is specifically, because it's kind of indicating at the end of the cinematic that this guy doesn't make it out which 
is uh used to happen a lot with blizzard games after all i mean think about the first cinematic for warcraft 3 where the human and the orc fight the infernal and both die or in starcraft where the initial trailer for that was the terran working in space and then meeting the protoss and all getting evaporated and so here i think that actually might support my position to say that this is a different warrior who has come to try to conquer the labyrinth and what does he find but death and destruction in this place and so he searches it around uh and he finds death this person here uh next to the barrels has died long ago and it could be because of famine after all look at look at the landscape look at the look at the countryside it seems quite ravaged and that gets us back to the sword which i think that's why it goes in this order here uh, after that next cutaway to the sword we see several zombies who are hey well i don't want to say zombies actually we see several corpses hanging uh from this tree and they start moving implying that now they're zombies but we know also why these people were hung right if you if you think back to the manual whenever we were talking about the maddening of Leoric and how he was ordering lots of people to die and considering that the the price or the punishment for for treason is hanging and so these these all men have all been hanged and we also get to see them moved indicating that now the darkening of Tristram is bringing them to life we see uh, the warrior, this warrior, look around in the house, finds nothing. And finally, we see, oh, yes, we see the image of the chained person there in, in the stone, which implies that this is in the cathedral. Which, remember, the cathedral is built over the monastery, which is built over the catacombs, which, right, it's it, there are layers of it and it's supposed to be stratified for that reason kind of like the bloodborne stratification of the ease the ron chalices things like that and so here we see this person in prison and it implies right we saw the warrior last time this is where it's led him now into the cathedral where he finds people chained and tombs moving on their own and finally the shadows in the shadows, the uh, the demonic eyes of demons peering out at him. And at last, we're close enough to the sword where it glows brilliantly, and then all hell breaks loose. So let me pause here, because the sword, <clears throat> being that instantiation of the defeated, ruined country that is Condoros at this point, the setting sun also indicating that it's glory long past, this is the the fruit which has begot ha, has been begotten from that action from Leoric's corruption this isn't all uh, uh this isn't all albrick's doing all of his dream like there is other things involved diablo corrupted the whole system and he went first with the father for a reason which We'll continue on to talk about because uh, our quest line video, when we get to that, we'll uh, definitely discuss those topics. But for now, I just do, I really want to mention that this is the instantiation, the creation of demonic energy in one's own land by bringing down the ruin of the order and the light that existed before. And now we know that this sword too in the ground indicates what we saw in the last one. There's no army left to defend Condoros from Diablo's wrath. Diablo has systematically and surgically removed each obstacle in his way, starting with the king. And now there's no army left. The the only the sword here on the hill has been uh, abandoned. And so now that. Uh, that mantle must be assumed, right? And so then we see uh, what happens 
with Albrecht's dream here, which is another thing. After that army and everything's lost and despair is ultimately uh, instantiated, that's when the darkening of Tristram happens and Albrecht uh, begins to unleash these demons, let's say. And so then we see a bunch of demons, including the goat, the goat demons and the horn demons. And then finally, uh, let me see this real quick. We see a, a spitter. It, it looks like an overlord demon knocks out this warrior at the end, or at least, uh, yeah, knocks him out. I mean, it's showing it from a first person view. He punches the camera and then that collapses and it shows Diablo at that point, which um, I think that's a little bit more to add to the analysis of this not being the warrior that you play. And then finally, at the end, we see Diablo. Uh, and then Diablo appears on the screen, of course. But here, right, is, this is why I was, I was thinking maybe this warrior made it all the way down there and died. Maybe this is locked on in, in this beginning. Uh, hard, hard to say. Hard to say who it is. Because we know eventually, um, we'll talk about that when we get to the quest, actually. I'll hold off on it. I do just want to mention, though, then we get to Diablo at the end, and it really implies that whoever this warrior is in, in here uh, didn't make it out if they're a canon character at all. So the cinematic as a whole, it really introduces the world well by only using visual storytelling. This is a, a, And this is something people con consistently praise Diablo 1 uh, for, is the tone and the atmosphere and that's all set really here with the intro cinematic because we see a desolate land that's been desolated by the abandonment of the light which has been created by the corruption of the father paternal spirit of the land um, and the abduction of the salvation of the land and the just and the destruction of the uh, army of the land and so that's all really portrayed here. We don't we don't get to see Albrecht as much, but knowing that knowing what we know from the manual, uh, the intro cinematic has a lot to say about Diablo's motives and how he's done these things. Um, just from, and it's almost it's almost really cool. It's like this is a this is a character that had come to Tristram before you and tried to go to the cathedral, and that's what we see in the opening cinematic, especially since. It's like really the first time the zombies start moving and um, it sets it up really well. That's what it symbolically stands for. And the sword, especially being the downfall of the order of the land with no army left to defend Tristram is an important part of the opening cinematic. Uh, but this video is actually going to be pretty short because this, this opening cinematic is only a minute and 53 seconds. So there's not too much more to say. Besides, uh, when we see that last title part at the end with Diablo and the fire going, uh, it's it's very it, it already is invoking those those ideas of destruction and, and wildfire burning the land, scorching the earth, right? And it's really it really is a scorched earth from what we see in the opening cinematic already. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. It's probably going to be one of the shorter ones because I will need to go on later to uh, do each of the quests, quest videos, and that might take some time. But I hope you guys enjoyed it. I've been your host on the left, Owl, and this was the Diablo 1 opening cinematic video. I'll see you guys next time.